it's Carolina Moore, your favorite sewing and quilting YouTuber, and I'm here today with a, another video. This one is all about marking tools. We're going to be marking with all different kinds of marking pens. These are all marking pens that I use pretty regularly in quilting and have different uses for them, and there's different reasons why the different marking pens are great for different purposes. So let's dive in and start playing with some pens. These are a bunch of different marking tools and it's by no means representative of all the marking tools out there in the quilt world. These are just a couple that I wanted to start off with and give you kind of an idea of what there is. These are really the most popular that I see used the most. We're going to go through each one and what it does and what my preferred uses for it are and definitely when you shouldn't use the different marking tools. So I'm gonna start off with, this is just a Micron pen. You can get this at quilt shops and you can get it at different um, art supply stores and it makes a really great line. It draws on fabric beautifully and we're gonna go on both light fabric and dark fabric today because in quilting we often use both and it does a really nice job of writing on fabric. The challenge is that it's permanent. So this is a pen that you want to use when you're writing on your fabric labels, for example, but it's not necessarily a pen that you'd wanna use when marking quilts. You definitely don't wanna use it on the front of your quilts when you're marking your quilting designs, and if you use it on the back of a quilt, it might bleed through to the front and you might be able to see it. So this is a permanent pen used for marking quilts when you're adding labels and that's the Micron pen. Next I have three different kinds of water soluble pens, just water soluble fabric marking pens. These are among my favorite out there. This one has a nice felt tip on it and these are ones that have been used in my quilting studio, so they are not going to be um, fresh out of the package. These have been used a bit. And you can see, I can see them on a light and dark fabric, which is what I like about them. These are all water soluble. So, this one has had a lot of love so the felt tip does get a little blunt. When you're trying to mark really specific lines, these older pens, as they get older, the felt tip pens, they aren't quite as precise when making lines. You can get a fine tip pen like this one, and it's much more precise with marking, but, and I'll show you, if I do just a single line with it, it's not as easy to see. So I find that I often have to mark a couple times with the fine tip pen to be able to get the kind of results so that I can really see where I'm sewing with these fine tip marking pens. So these are all water soluble. We'll go over how to remove them later on. Let's go ahead and put these in the order that we use them. There we go. These two are friction pens. Friction pens became really popular ooh, probably in the early 2000s, um, and they started maybe 2010s. That was going over a couple times. Let's go over just once. And they are great marking pens. The story about the friction pens is that a friction pen will disappear when ironed. And that has not been my experience, but we will show you exactly what the disappearance of a friction pen looks like. But you can see, I can see it really well on the light fabric, maybe not so well on the dark fabric. And I have a green one I'm also going to use a pink friction pen. That is great. The great thing about the friction pens is that they are in all different kinds of colors. So depending on what kind of fabric that you are marking, you can see your marks really well. And you can see here on the dark fabric, the pink is barely showing up at all, even though it showed up really well on this light fabric. 
For dark fabrics, one of my favorite marking tools is a chalk pen. So we'll do it here on the light fabric and you can really barely see it. White on yellow is not ideal, but when I bring it over here to the dark fabric, the white shows up really, really well. And of all of these on the dark fabric, the white has shown up the best. Lastly, I wanted to share, this is just a regular mechanical pencil. It's a graphite pencil and it works great in a pinch for marking fabrics as well. And it shows up really well on the light fabric. Okay. On the dark fabric, as long as you've got good light in your sewing room and you can see, but the graphite pencil will actually erase away. And I like it for the back of fabrics as well. These are all different ways that you can mark your lines for doing half square triangles or other stitching lines when doing different kinds of blocks and all of these work. The question is how well do they go away, especially when we're looking at marking the front of our quilts. I'm super careful about marking the front of my quilts. My preference is usually a chalk line because it'll be able to go away or these blue lines. Now with the blue lines, you can use a little bit of water and let me, there we go. And it'll blot away. I find with some of the um, heavier inked blue lines that the ink will actually dissolve in this water. And as it dries, you'll get kind of like a blue fuzzy. So my preference when getting rid of the blue or water soluble lines is actually to put water on my paper towel and then blot away the markings. And I find that that works best and then kind of dry it as I go to absorb as much of the blue ink back into the paper towel. Because when you're wetting it, you are not actually making the blue ink disappear in water. You are just, it dissolves into the water and now instead of having the blue ink just in this one spot, you have it kind of spread out and it's less noticeable, but depending on how this dries, it could actually become really noticeable when your water dries. So that's why I prefer a blotting method where I then dry up as much of that water as possible, pulling the ink actually off of the fabric. For our friction pen lines, we can use heat to disappear those away. And with a little bit of heat, look at that on the light fabric. I can kind of see where they were. It almost gives me like a waxy line looks like where it was. But if I'd stitched on that line, I wouldn't notice at all. If I'd stitched really close to that line, I might be able to see it a little bit, but it really looks more like a crease than anything else. When I do it on a dark fabric like this one, you can see a little bit better that those lines actually became white. So the friction pens don't really disappear, they become white. And we'll go ahead and grab one of them and really mark. So I've got some nice scribbles here on my fabric. And when I run the iron over them, they become this white waxy rather than actually disappearing. The other crazy thing about the friction pens is it's basically a heat sensitive ink. It's not a heat disappearing ink. So heat makes it turn white, which is why people use these on writing paper, you can write on white paper and then rubbing this kind of eraser creates friction, which creates heat and makes it an erasable pen. However, if you put this in the freezer, if I were to put these in my freezer for, oh, 10 minutes or so, maybe half an hour, the lines would come back. They'd be faded, but they would come back. And this has become a problem for quilters who are sending their quilts off to a friend. They're sending their quilts off to a quilt show. 
that they make their quilt, they've marked the front, they've quilted the quilt using their markings on the front, they've used heat to get rid of those markings, and then they package it up and ship it. And when it's being shipped, it could be sitting on the tarmac in a cold city, it could be on the back of a truck for several hours in the cold, and that cold actually brings the ink back. So when the quilt is opened up and the box is opened up and people see the quilt, they see this quilt that has all these crazy markings on it, which makes absolutely no sense. So that's why these friction pens, while they're fine for the back of fabric when you're stitching half square triangles or something like that, you definitely don't want to use them on the front of your fabric. You want stuff that you're going to be able to lift off and really remove when going on the front of your fabric. And I have a whole nother video that I'm doing on a Hera marker, which is a hair marker is a really great way to mark the front of your quilts in a way that won't be damaging or leave lasting marks in any way. Did you know that there were so many different pens and so many different uses? You'll want to stock up on different kinds of pens so that you have the right one handy when you have a project. I have all the links for these different kinds of pens down in the description box, so be sure to go down there and order yourself a good collection of quilting pens. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Remember the comments box is for you and that's for you to ask me questions so that I can get you some answers. If you really like this video, please consider sharing it with some friends, either with your quilting guild or any quilting groups that you have online. They might enjoy learning some of these tips as well. And if you're new around here, make sure you've subscribed and hit that bell so that you don't miss a single video because I have a lot more great quilting content coming your way. Thanks so much my friends and I'll see you right here real soon.